a short story from In Deep Waters, which you can get at now Voyagers. They have many copies. I know Mark would love to get that. All of them go out the front door. <laughs> um, and breast, break, Tess. when she thinks about signing books with me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Tess and Brandy are now together. They've sorted out their, their difference between friends and, and lovers. But they've always kept a kind of an agreement about it being okay to be borrowed. And so <laughs> Tess, they, they decided they wanted to go to work for the, for the lesbian vacation group. That would be really fun to see the world, but they're lesbians. They love working for, for crowds. And, and so they've arranged to give up a week's vacation and actually work this uh, this cruise that's going. And um, just before they leave, Tess breaks an ankle. And she can't go. And there's Brandy. She's all by herself on this floating boat that was really a bunch of nice women. And then she started writing her stories. <laughs> <laughs> the longest women you have ever read about. And um, I'm telling you. And so Tess is, is there. She's all by herself. A boatload of women who are doing everything everywhere. And sometimes not with the doors closed. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I thought it was her nice story. Anyway, um, just good thing the door was open. The little lady had to go in and borrow the loop, so. <laughs> so here we have Tess. She's sitting alone in her stateroom. Oh, and it's kind of um, Feeling sorry for myself, I sat in my stateroom and tried not to miss Tess. I decided that a quick tryst with my vibrator might be just the thing and claimed it from the dresser drawer. A search for the nearest outlet to the bed only increased my frustration level. The bargain cabins where staff are stayed were so small, there was just one outlet in the bathroom, which was so tiny, there wasn't even room enough to lie on the floor. Mel had joked the shower stalls were converted coffins. <laughs> and, dang it, I had never mastered the art of having a full-blown, knee-shaking, muscle-clenching orgasm standing up. Twenty minutes later, I had ascertained there was no miraculously appearing extension cord in my suitcase. The corridor outside was empty of other human beings, let alone one with an extension cord slung over one shoulder. <laughs> I was tired and cranky and no longer in the mood to let my vibrator have its way with me. I went to bed and it took nearly 15 minutes to fall asleep. So the next night, she's been flirting with a, a colleague, a co-worker. Um, and they're standing at the railing and there's the moonlight and all everything and anyway, so. Um, Randy is really considering something. Exploring women, learning them, had for years been one of the highlights of my life. Women are simply the best. And here was Mel, ready to play with me, more butch than any woman I'd ever been with, and I was quite certain there would be more than one new experience with her. In the three years I had been with Tess, we had our understanding about borrowing. Tess had been the one who had pointed out that expecting our bodies to never change and our self-knowledge to be static was unrealistic. Certainly her self-knowledge had evolved. That was why she was with me and not a guy. I didn't expect her to never change. I did expect her to want me to be part of those changes. Given that we worked and lived side by side, it wasn't surprising that neither of us had taken the advantage of the agreement. Here I was, however, eager to be with someone else, thinking that the experience would be something to tell Tess about, wondering if the telling would get us in the raunchy mood we both relished. Mel pulled me into her embrace. The kiss was very nice and suggested that there could be real heat and real play. Unlike you, I am a roommate, she said, so if you'd like, we could go to your cabin. It would be a shame to waste it, I agreed. I could pick up a few things from my cabin on the way. I was about to suggest an extension cord <laughs> when she cupped my face and kissed me again, harder this time. My skin was tingling and as I leaned into her, all that muscle and strength was feeling very, very good to me. One hand slipped under the waistband of my shorts, gripping my hip, and I had the thought that I could not ignore. Tess didn't touch me quite like that. And then I realized the woman kissing me wasn't Tess. Of course she wasn't. I, I knew that. It was Mel, who wasn't Tess. She touched me, kissed me, and my body responded, no doubt about it. But my infernal brain kept thinking her fingers would move there, or her tongue would touch here, because that was how Tess touched me. Tess, who knew my body now better than I did. Tess, who possessed every key there was to me. I could die, he had a brain. <laughs> Mel let go of me and gave me a puzzled look. Are you sure about this? Actually, I'm not. 
you'd just be a stand-in for my girlfriend. I'm sorry. I don't care. I, I get the feeling you'd be a really fun time. I think you probably are too, but I love my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and while parts of me want you, all of me is only going to be happy with her. She took my refusal with good grace and left me at the railing with a cheery smile. And I was fairly certain that the rest of the week wouldn't be awkward between us because of the last few minutes. I was most of the way to my cabin when I realized I still needed an extension. <laughs> Fine, I thought, sitting on my bed all alone. I was being a <coughs> Kisses from not test women were useless. I was an old married woman, settled down, constrained, giving up the happy life of soul-wrenching ecstasy through any and all means by which I could find it. And for what? For a chick with long arms. I could hear Tess saying that to me as clear as the day in my head. I gave up footloose and fancy free life for a woman who some nights could not get fucked enough and all nights could not hold me enough. For a woman who was generous and kind, thoughtful and wise, hot as a firecracker and frankly smarter than I was. I gave up nights with not Tesses for breakfasts and brownies and tomorrows and hot sex with Tess. I really wanted an extension cord. <laughs> 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 very, very good bits um, because she finds an extension cord. So. <laughs> 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 I was praying she found the phone. <laughs> <laughs> she oh, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs>